Yes, um, coil. Yeah, 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 let's start. Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the seventh public lecture organized by Cultural Studies Research Forum. Cultural Studies Research Forum is a non-profit enterprise started by the students of Vallad's Test to organize free public lectures courses and discussions in various aspects of research and cultural studies. It was inaugurated on 13th April 2021 and we invite all of you to take initiative to organize our lectures and connect us with researchers, professors and scholars from across India to keep this program running successfully. Remember, this is our forum and each and every one of us has the right to initiate meaningful discussions and deliberations. Do continue supporting us and help us build this forum. Now, I would love to introduce our respected speaker, Dr. Ethiran Kathiravan, for this talk on the topic, the feminine body politic. He is a senior scientist at University of Chicago, also a senior scientist at Department of Biology, Warbonsi Community College, United States of America. He has achieved his PhD in cell biology from JNU. He is a postdoctoral fellow at St. Louis University, a fellow at Department of Pediatrics, John Hopkins University, Baltimore. He has been publishing many papers in leading scientific journals. He holds patents for many discoveries. He is also a frequent writer in Malayalam publications on popular science, issue of sociopolitical relevance, film studies and analysis, music and dance. With that being said, let us call upon Dr. Ethiran Kathiravan to enlighten us with his words. Sir, please. Krishit, could you please check uh, that is there or not? Yes, yes, yes. Sir, uh, let me message you. One second. Yeah, please. Hello, friends. Please wait for a few minutes. Sir will be joining soon. I hope uh, you will enjoy this session. Thank you. Uh, sir, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Ethereum, sir? Yes. Yes, Thank let's you. start. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I, I think you missed the welcome note. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a brief introduction of the, I mean, your works and yourself. Okay. Uh, it's an honor for all of us, especially, uh, you know, Total Inclusive Solutions and Cultural Studies Forum uh, to you, uh, to have you here. And this is our seventh lecture in 2020. And thank you very much uh, on behalf of uh, Kal Dr. Kalyani Vallat and uh, Cultural Studies Forum. Uh, mm -hmm. This is an you know, unofficial welcome note. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. Let's start. All right. Thank you. So, so can we start? I'm here. Yes, yes. Hello. Uh, so the screen visible, the presentation is visible to you. Yes. So, so um, I don't have the control, is it? You have the control? Yes, yes, the yes, yes. Yes, uh -oh. yes, I have. All right. Okay. Um, that's why. Right. So I have to tell you to change the slide. All right. Yes, please, please. Oh. I can, I can. Oh, all right. Okay. So. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. 
that is a great opportunity um, because I think there are many here to, to listen. And uh, the topic is a little bit inflammatory, <laughs> yes, and it's current and it is valid. That's why I thought I should talk about this. And uh, I hope there will be a discussion to follow because you know, it should not be just it's not be just me talking. Uh, I wish uh, others would uh, share their thoughts because this is a topic which has to be discussed uh, far and wide and deep. So I hope all of you will join for a discussion later. I, I hope there's enough time for it. Um, the organizers would. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. They'll take care of yes, it. Yes. All right. So this is the feminine. Uh, the body politics, and that's what we are going to discuss today. Uh, this little uh, problematic issue because uh, deals with your anatomy, your physiology, evolution, social norms, um, masculine hegemony, and all these things are involved in this. So let us can you have the next slide. Let us begin with our body. Let's start with the question, body, a liability. Yes, it is a liability. It's, we are the only species who thinks like this is human. Human beings are utterly different. They think about their body and they have made it a liability. This did not happen earlier. This happened during our cultural evolution or the social evolution. So this is something modern and something recent. Otherwise, our body, the human body, was any other mammalian body. And now it has become a liability, especially for women. It has become a liability, and it is not easy to cross um, a barrier set up by the society. And this was part of the body aesthetics evolved with the bondage to sexual selection. Sexual selection is prevalent in almost all animals. The female will select the best male. Best male means the strongest, the healthiest, and the most vibrant male will be selected. That's why peacocks, remember, is a male peacock. It will set out its plumes and display it. And what is it saying? Please select me as your mate. Please take me. So this is part of evolution. And now it has become a, for human beings, it is a liability. Your body, your body display has become a liability. And it was part of sexual selection to display yourself, to display your body. But that was the male body but human beings reversed it. They shifted it to the female body. This kind of defies the norms of evolution. And body beauty does not have anything to do with the survival. Evolution is all about survival. And body beauty does not have anything to do with survival. Beauty need not be part of any health issues or health system. It's totally fake, but we have our own conception. Can I have the next slide? Beauty perceived as a sign of health. In fact, it is not. A beautiful person is not a healthy person, but we set up the rules in such a way that the beautiful body could be a healthy body, especially for women. And the body becomes a tool of display. Uh, just opposite to the evolutionary norms, female body becomes a tool for display. That is how the society set it up. All right. As I said, it's something recent. In human evolution, it's not very old. It's kind of recent. And this became crucial for non-reproductive mating. That's what humans did. 98% of animals they mate to have offsprings, not for the fun of it. They have sex, not for the fun of it, just to procreate. 
just to have offspring. But human beings totally changed the role we do it for fun. Non-reproductive mating. And here, aesthetics come to play. The beauty of female body would come to play. And the modern social norms made it all the more difficult. Body is for display. It has become so difficult because the question is there, what to display, how to display, where, when to display, because I need to get a mate. I need to have sex. And it's not for procreation. It's not to have offspring. It is just for fun. This is a big challenge to the, the rules of evolution. That's what happened. Can you have the next slide? Please. Body has become a commodity in that way. In social value system, it is, it is a commodity. Yes, it has become one. And liberalization of sex intensified this. Because when sex became just a matter of choice of the day, body, you have to sell the body. You have to make it clear, hey, I'm ready to mate. For no reason, just for fun. Body gets tied with the marketing value. So when it becomes a commodity, body gets tied with the marketing value in the society. It's not monetary value. It's conceptual value, the value which society decides. So it comes with the value and it has to be marketed. Yes. Can I have the next slide, please? So it's judgmental. There are judgmental norms. Especially women's body would come under social observation, the body to be displayed. It should be appealing. It's always being judged. And adorned body is a hallmark. Yes, women need to display it because it is being marketed. It's annoyingly it is being done. And that is how the, the patriarchal system or the masculine hegemony has decided. It sets the role. And an adorned body of, of women, of females, became the main ingredient in cultural formulations. In cultural formulations, it's all decided. The rules are set how women behave, how they look like, how they behave, what are their attributes. So culture of a particular ethnic group or a particular society is judged by, hey, how are the girls there? How are the women there? Are they good looking? Do they behave properly? Do they market themselves easily and well? How are they? Oh, that society is very good. Women are really good. They are well behaved. They are beautiful. Yes, there's a lot of demand. They set up themselves as if there's demand for them. Culture. The culture of that society is supreme. That is a judgment. So it's under judgmental norms of the society, especially women's body. Can we have the next slide? Whose body is being displayed? It's gendered body. Gendered body design different in social perception from anatomical and physiological body. You need to display a different body. It's not your anatomical body. It's not your physiological body. It is something which is appealing, a body which is appealing to all. This may not have anything to do with real anatomical body. Because your anatomical body could be not very appealing. So you need to change it. Body becomes socially alienated. Your real body, woman's, woman's real body, gets alienated. And how does that happen? Oh, we have cosmetic industry to help. Cosmetic industries will help you to hide your anatomical body, your physiological body, and it can display a different body 
which the society demands. Kim Kardashian emerged. I, I hope all of you know Kim Kardashian. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully, you know Kim Kardashian, right? Kim Kardashian emerged. Yes. Okay. Shruti Mandal says yeah, but yes. So Kim Kardashian. Uh, Kim Kardashian emerged because uh, she's an icon for cosmetic industry. She's an icon for a presentable body, and uh, she has become a symbol of a woman's body in society, how it should be. Okay, can you have the next slide? That's Kim Kardashian and her sisters, all right? And uh, that's what she proclaims. That's what she and her sisters proclaim. Look at my body. This is what body should be. This is what woman should be displaying. I mean, not desirable. And if it is not desirable, why my brand cosmetics? She herself has, is, is a brand name. Kim Kardashian herself is a brand name. And that's what she's proclaiming by my uh, And she had even a perfume she said that she used uh, a, in her first night. The perfume sold out immediately. Yes. Oh, I use this perfume. This is a brand name. And it's, I think it's named First Night or something. Yes. That is what women should do with the, this is what women should do with the body. Look at my body. And can you have next slide? That is Kim Kardashian. This is what she's proclaiming. Look at my body. This is what women's body should be. In fact, this is not women's body per se, because women evolutionarily women are supposed to bear children. We have to continue the race. All the animals, all, not only animals, all the living beings. The main attribute is continuing the life system, the species. This may not be, this could be, this may not be the female body all the time. Your anatomical body could be completely different, especially if you have like three children, three deliveries, your body may change. That's part of your physiology. The hormones may change. And uh, this figure, which Kim Kardashian would project, may not sustain forever. Nope. But this is what she's proclaiming. Woman, hey, look like this. Your body is important. And sometimes she may mean that it's only the body which is important. What about your brain? No, we are not going into that subject anyway. There is not. We are not discussing that today. So maybe some other time. Can you have the next slide? How body becomes alienated. So the external appearance is what is valued. Okay. And it's not your body per se. It should be packed and ready for display. It should be remodeled. You have to buy cosmetics. You have to change it. You have to hide your real body. So your own body has become an alien in you. That's what society demands. That is why you know Kim Kardashian very well. It's not just you. All over the world, she's well known. And uh, this is what happens through her messages. Your body is become alienated. We do not get it, we do not understand because the social pressure is so high. It runs really deep. So we don't even realize that your real body is getting alienated. Can I have the next slide? So here comes the art of makeup. It's the art of disguise. You have to hide yourself. Kim Kardashian and cosmetics clearly tells you. It's not Kim Kardashian, it's our society telling. For men, soap and water, a shave and keeping up the hygiene could be enough. That's enough for him, all right? But for her, multitude of disciplines are prescribed how to keep your body. You have to remodel it. Woman, she has been made by God with bodily deficiencies. That's what 
the cosmetic industry is telling you, telling us, telling the society, women's body has to be remodeled. It has to be patched up. New appliances has to be bought, repainted. It has to smell good. It's like your kitchen remodeling. Women's body is something else which has to be remodeled. Why? Because God made women with body deficiencies. Your body as such is not good enough. Look at the pathetic part of it. Imperfect woman, please become feminine. That's what the current society is, is telling you. Women are imperfect. The body is imperfect. And disguise yourself, the art of makeup. That's why I have the headache. The art of makeup is the art of disguise. Disguise yourself. Remodel. Just like remodeling your kitchen, remodel yourself. Display something good, something which is appealing and appealing. Appealing to whom? Especially, it's understood. No need to explain. Appealing to men, the whole society. It's a men's society. And that's another discussion point. We are not going into that. Can you have the next slide? And why feminine? Why do we need to have this remodeling? Why do you have to remodel the kitchen, your body? We are born male or female, remember this. We are not born masculine or feminine. That is not necessary, that's not. We have been born with all the fittings, all the fittings to be a male, all the fittings to be a female. You need not be masculine, you need not be feminine. Evolution does not instruct that. Evolution tells you, okay, you be a male, you be a female, that's enough. If you have testes and penis, that's okay for the production. If you have ovaries and vagina, it's enough. Nothing more than that for procreation and for survival and to continue the race. That's all you needed. But we made these two new terms, masculine and feminine. And this feminine, that's today's topic. Why feminine? Femininity is an artifice, an achievement. The mode of enacting and reenacting, it's received gender norms, which surface at so many states of flesh. That is a big makeover. That is a big makeover. Femininity is an artifice. Yes. And public display of gendered body can happen. The society demands it. Sorry, sir. Please come. Okay. All right. You can ask them to mute. Okay. Because uh, this inadvertently this happens. That's okay. Does gender matter in this case? Yes, gender does matter. Yes, it does. And it can get into confusing uh, uh, modalities. Yeah, can I have the next slide? Should women be feminine? Of course, of course, they have to be feminine. How manly a man should be? The question not asked so frequently. We never ask the question. It's not asked that much. Should a woman of power have to display play more of a manly body. That's kind of reason. Yes. A woman of power, maybe, would display a more manly body. And who decides this? Those are two big questions. It was only Indira Gandhi who still remained in her draped beautiful sari. In any other country, she would have been pressurized. Not openly, internally pressurized to wear a man's suit. She resisted. She was ruling the country with Times published. Yeah, anyway, that's a different, little different going tangentially. But should a woman of power have to display more of a manly body? Could be something. Can you have the next slide? Yes. 
sometimes you have to get into this transfiguration. Transfiguration is a biblical term. And Jesus, uh, when he resurrected, he had more radiance. His body was completely changed. It was magnificent transfiguration. And this is sometimes demanding. If you are in the position of an, an, an executive, in, a, in an executive position, you may be instructed indirectly to dress like a man, but you had to be, you had to project your face and your hair as much feminine as possible. Look at this one. She has the man's dress, the typical office suit, but she has to be feminine by her face, by her head. She should have eyeliners. She should have a eyelash, everything feminine, but transfiguration is to happen. That has been instructed. That has come to society easily. This came into society so easily. Transfiguration. You have to dress like a man most of the time. And that works. This works. Only if you dress like a man, you kind of command others. That has stuck in the corporate world. Can you have the next slide? And this is another attribute of it. Okay. She is, this girl is in a man's executive suit, but it is stitched, it is made to fit her curves. Look at that. It is, she's wearing almost exactly the same kind of jacket, but you would notice it's not very clear, but how do you change? How do you make a difference to proclaim that? Well, I'm wearing a man's uh, coat or a jacket, but it's feminine. How do you do that? Change the buttons. If it is from right to left for men, it should be left to right. The button should be on the left side and the hole should be on the right side of the, the jacket. That is very strange. That is proclaiming. I know that most of you would be familiar with that. If you have any kind of shirt-like garment, if it is women's garment, the buttons would switch as if it serves a purpose. It's such a nonsensical thought that switching the button to left to right would do it. But look at look at her posture. Although she is in a man's attire, she has to pose in a different way. She has to show and she has to display the femininity, the curves. And that's why she has a cross leg. Look at the way, compare the way he starts and she stands. She has to cross her legs, display her curves. She's wearing almost the same suit as him, but it's different. So it is, here comes the sexuality of it. Here comes the femininity. So this mode kind of instructs, all right, you are wearing a man's dress but you better make it different don't lose your femininity you should be as much feminine as possible bring out your curly hair put it out over your shoulder cross your legs so that your your uh, curl lines are projected that is how you do the transfiguration femininity in masculinity, it's a femininity. It's not being hidden. It's a frightfully explicit. That is what is happening. Can you have the next slide? And your private body, where is your private body? Your private body disappears. What is the privacy value of your body? What is the privacy value of your projected image? Your projected image is different. Your private body is different. Your projected image is totally different. The privacy value of your body changes. This is not easy. This is a conflict too. And woman, this is a conflict because as I said before, your private body, your anatomical body has to be hidden. It should be 
again, nobody should say it. How much does gender matter? Yes. The gender matters here in this issue. A man may not hide his private body. A woman should hide her body and bring it up in a different way. If a female, your private body should be maintained as close to public body, but that's not possible. You have to feign it, you have to fake it. You need to impress people that, hey, my private body and my public body are the same, which is not that easy. It may show up sometimes. That's why in that picture, she was, she had a hand over her coat, pulling it in the middle so that her curve could be revealed. She had to cross her legs. She's trying to hide her private body and show up and look at this. This is a feminine body. If a female, your private body should be maintained as close to public body, which is not easy, but she's trying well most of the time or sometimes. Well, it depends. This may shift. This may shift later. Okay, for work. So what she was doing, she had men's garment in the corporate world, assuming that that will bring in that will supply some command in the office. But this kind of shifts when a woman needs to do some other work. This is not, this whole concept is totally overturned in other situations, depending on what situation you are in. Can you have the next slide? Here. Perfect woman. They have been this on their forehead. Look at them. All of them have been this. They are at work. They're wearing men's shirts. The buttons haven't switched. All right. The buttons there, most of them wear men's shirt. But nobody cares here. Perfectly woman. <clears throat> and it's their convenience. Economically, this is better for them. This suits them economically. This suits them for the type of work they do. But they are wearing men's shirt easily, but nobody cares. Nobody is looking and nobody is telling them, hey, how come you are wearing men's dress? It depends on which social strata you are. No questions asked. If you are up in the social strata, <clears throat> your body becomes all the more important. So I'm not going into the sociology of it. That could be a different topic. But here, that question is not being asked. And this is perfect, this is easy, because they, this woman understand the practicability of a shirt, which was made for men, the Western world. But look at it. It has, this has become, this is kind of recent. It's not very ancient. This, Habit came to us kind of recently, maybe 30 years. This originated because it's so convenient. And not only many of the workers here, so they have maybe nursing their babies in between. It's easily open. You can open the button and easily you can nurse your baby. It has practical aspects. It's, uh, it has economical aspects because it's very cheap. You can get it easily. You can get an old shirt from your husband, your father or your brother, or you can pick it up from the trash. Can I have the next slide? Yes. It's so easy. It's easily available. It's cheap. It's practical. It covers your body from hot sun also because it has long sleeves. Perfect made for this job. So it's completely different from a corporate suit which upper strata women can enjoy in a different way, revealing their body curves. But here, there's no such intention because this is the bare facts of life. This is the survival. This makes easy for their, their survival on their job. But nobody cares, as I said, the whole algorithm shifts here. The body, uh, 
does the body politics totally shifts here. The algorithm totally changes. And this is not a matter of discussion too. We never even look at this, we never even discuss it, all right? And that is how the society has a strata. It has a hierarchy in deciding the body politics. It depends where in that hierarchy, where in that ladder, which step of the ladder you are standing, it depends. The algorithm can shift. So your body, woman's body, is displayed, it depends on which strata of the society you belong to. Can we have the next slide? And the question is constantly being asked. Uh, are you feminine? In fact, it's nobody's concern. And as I said, social hierarchy sets the rules. And that is why a woman at the construction site can wear a shirt. A woman in paddy field can wear it. And nobody is asking this question, hey, are you feminine? That, that question is not being asked there. And it's nobody's concern there. But it becomes the moment you are going up in the social strata, this question becomes really hard. The intensity of this question will increase when you go up in the social strata. The body, that's why he said the body algorithm shifts. There's a big shift in the algorithm of the body politics. Can you have the next slide? And we had once unisex dress, especially in Kerala. This used to be dress. One um, veshti or a loincloth and an upper piece of, another piece of cloth. No stitching needed, nothing needed, just two pieces of cloth. Unisex dress in Kerala and men also used to wear this. This used to be the case and there's no demand to display any difference. Nothing asked about the femininity and, and uh, as you all know, uh, the upper part of the body uh, need not be even covered, all right? No blouse, nothing. Uh, you can have your breast totally exposed. It did, did not have any sexual connotations. That we are not going into that, maybe later in, in another session. But it is possible, history proves that it is possible your feminine body need not be feminine. You can dress up as a man or a man can dress up as a woman. Can you have the next slide? Yeah, this is this is a modern Malayali man. He has the same. He has a long, a, a long cloth, what we call Vishti or Munda. And then he, he has an upper garment. It's again a piece of cloth. Just drape it around. That is okay. So the question of femininity need not be integrated or confused with the dress you wear because the body is the same. It's a man's body, it's a woman's body. It is not a masculine body and it's not a feminine body. It's just man and woman. Same dress, why not? And when dress evolved, Maybe this, this is what happened. Yeah. Can you have the next slide? Should gender be discriminated in public spaces now? This thought came up recently. In public spaces, why should the gender be discriminated? In fact, except for safety, there's no need, right? If your private body is almost equal to public body, no conflict arises. That means without the makeup, without the, the cosmetic industry supporting you to, for, for transfiguration, it's okay. There's no need to discriminate in public spaces. This, well, there's a big clamor for this. And we are changing slowly, little, little by little, little by little. Can, can you have the next slide? Gender neutral toilets 
have come over. And, and this see this notice, which was stuck uh, near a toilet, uh, is really cute. And somebody who has a sense of humor has made it. It has a dinner paper. Look at all the women there. There's a pregnant woman. There is a woman in sari with uh, earrings. There's another woman with a pan and a t-shirt. And then look at that, even a mermaid could be there. Look at that, there's a mermaid in the center. Gender neutral, even mermaids are welcome. Yes, there's a robot there, there's Superman there. So the gnomes are changing a little bit here and there, and but this notice is proclaiming, uh, look at the body, doesn't matter. Your inner body, your outer body, doesn't matter. Pregnant, not pregnant, uh, you, should, uh, you should look beautiful or not, doesn't matter. It is man and a woman, it's just human beings. Things are changing, the norms are changing little by little. The body politics changing a little much. Can you have the next slide? And femininity can dissolve in, in such cases. And this is another notice, all gender restroom. We have transgender, very thoughtful. Very thoughtful in this case, we have a man and a woman. And then we have trying to say half, look at look at the, uh, the upper garment. It's half and half. All gender restroom is highly inclusive. So there is no question of femininity here. It is man, woman, or even trans. This is highly progressive. Somewhere, I don't know where it is from. Uh, I'm sure it is from a society which is really thoughtful about body. Yes, can you have the next slide? Being male or female, there's a price to pay. I'm not going into detail here because we don't have time. And if you look at into our classics, into our classic Puranas, there's Narada Mohanam. And I won't go into the details because uh, that may take more time and that may take the whole discussion tangentially. So I'm not going Narada. Once I asked Sri Krishna how he can entertain 16,008 girlfriends, and Narada was transfigured he was changed to, into a girl then he goes through a female's life life cycle and narada has to experience everything a female would experience everything a female's body would provide for life support or not for life support he goes through motherhood uh, wife lover sexual partner, everything. Uh, so after all this, he learns a lesson. How or what is there, there being a female? What is it? What is femininity? He learns a lot. It's, it's a quite interesting story. You should read it, Narada Mohanam. Um, if you search for Narada Mohanam, maybe you see. And in Malayalam, there is a novel, Strainam by Akbar Kakatil. Uh, it's it also deals with uh, being male or female. You know, what is the price to be a female? And uh, if you change from one to another, what happens? And then uh, uh, the movie, The Skin I Live In by Pedro Almodovar. Almodovar is a famous uh, South American film director, and he has looked this into very detailed subjective way to be a male to be a female to be feminine can you have the next slide this movie kind of questions the skin i live in as we all know beauty is skin deep all right so this movie antonio banderas is a, as a lead role you should watch this movie if you haven't watched this movie please watch this movie the skin I live in. So here, he was made into that that picture on the left. It, it, it was a he. The sex change operation, he was made into a she. And he or she does not know what she is. I mean, a she, I mean, a he. And then uh, there are challenges 
of sex here. The challenges of the physical attributes of sexual organs, a huge challenge. The skin I live in. So the movie title itself kind of portrays or kind of proclaims that the skin outward appearance of your body could be different from your inner self is highly challenging and the story is very confusing uh, the characters uh, are interchanging man and woman shifting norms shifting the gender roles and everything such a such a complex movie and such a complex theme for this movie you should watch it's the skin i live in the whole gender question the body politics openly discussed there to the bottom yeah, the skin I leave it. Can I have the next slide? And how much to cover? Whose body is it anyway? And that's another question. Gender displays being synchronized. How much she is to cover? Who will decide how much to cover? What not to cover? Gender displays being synchronized. The dividing lines have been dissolved now. You know what to display what not to display how your body should be projected or how your body should not be projected shouldn't the female body be covered it depends on the culture it depends on the cultural norms the fashion sense will decide and depends on where you are presenting your body and it has gone beyond the patriarchal power sometimes but then the question always is there, is it for men's gays? Don't you dress up, hey, woman, don't you dress up to satisfy women's gays? Maybe not, maybe not, maybe for themselves, because they decide what to cover, what not to cover, which part of the body to cover, which part of the body not to cover. Is it for men's gays? It may not be, it just for, uh, fashion sense. Can you have the next slide? How much to cover? Whose body is it in there? The fashion. Uh, okay. Can you have the next slide? It didn't go any further. And when and where? That's the question. Can you have the next slide? Yes. This is Emma Stone and Heidi Klum at Oscar. They proclaimed that this is appropriate dress especially for oscar they try to dress up in a multitude of ways they may reveal they may not reveal most of the time it's revealing their body is not for sexual attraction it is for the fashion sense and it is an identity proclamation they declare in their identity too and uh, how much to cover how much not to cover these are open proclamations of women's body and uh, they don't care how much is covered how much not covered and especially in oscar it has with my mom how much of body to be covered and here as i said at the beginning the display to get a mate that idea is totally destroyed this is no, they're not trying to display themselves so so that they will get a mate that night. No, no way. That's not the case. But it is an open declaration. Can you have the next slide? But in a traditional setup, this is possible. If you're talking about aesthetics, this is okay. This is one of the famous Devi Varma paintings. And you can have this picture in your living room, open, made into a big print, framed nicely, neatly. Because here we are looking at the aesthetics of it. The body is being revealed. The famous Devi Varma painting. Yes, it's not, the, cannot compare with the Oscar show. So depending on the is depending on how you view it, the body could be revealed, the body could be open. Yes. So this, uh, I took this picture because this, this is everywhere. This is accepted. Yes. Because you are just looking at through aesthetic eye. Can I have the next? 
multiply. Another reviewer map heading, and it's defying modesty. Yes, the social norms are challenged here, very clearly challenged. And uh, the fruits in that uh, plate have a special shape, and that is not just incidental, that is purposeful, you know, what I'm talking about. The fruits are made in such a way, and it says a purpose behind it. They were learning it really well, but this is not to be, that's, you can ignore it. The suggestion, the suggestive modalities could be ignored, but this is clear. And are we defying modesty? Yes, we are. And what is modesty? How do you define modesty for women's body? How do you define modesty? And this is a question there. We can define modesty in different way. If you're looking through an aesthetic, through an aesthetic eye, it could be different. Can you have the next slide? This is the cover page of a, of a famous book by a famous Malayalam writer by Muhammad Bashir. And the, the book's name, which this book will not be published now if it is. This book came out in 1940s or 1950s, but now it is impossible. Uh, it, is, it is one Bhagavad Gita and some breasts. That's the name of the book. We cannot bring these two together in today's world in India. It's impossible. We cannot bring in Bhagavad Gita and breasts together. And the cover page was explicit. The cover page was explicit and Bashir could dare, and Malayalis could dare to get this book published and read with this cover page. Tradition, what is tradition? Tradition, what is, what does tradition proclaim of a woman's body? This was placed bare on society, yes. And, and the concept also, the story is um, kind of witty and funny as Bashir always does, but, we had this once in our society. I remember we had these kind of days. We could bring in Bhagavad Gita and female upper body parts together with no problem. Can you have the next slide? Let us shift a little bit, shift up the focus a little bit. This is Adi, Prichit Menorimba. And sorry about that, Malayalam. Uh, he wrote an article in uh, Truko, we think, the famous medium. Uh, he's queer. And uh, I don't know whether we can call him trans. Uh, but uh, he's no, he queer. identified as a queer only. Queer so only, is it? Thank you. Yes, I had a question on that. Yes, queer. Yes. And uh, he doesn't uh, conform to the trans or anything because he looks perfectly like a man and he wants to look like a man and uh, that's different but he was challenged his dressing his attitudes challenged and what 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 is written there in malayalam is i'll translate uh, it, well, as as a queer student in be at the classroom i am getting suffocated i'm getting suffocated to death in the classroom because he was because the way he, he behaves and the way he dresses the teacher had to put him in a different place in the class he was asked to stand up and move in the class and to sit somewhere else yes his body was a problem this is a typical example of how society would perceive it and how society will try to appropriate it gender shift could be brutal yes it was brutal for him for adi it was brutal can you have the next slide adi's dress adi's sexuality adi's gender all this are put in question and it has become brutal for him gender shift could be brutal yes because society has to appropriate the body into its own norms, society is perplexed. That is represented by the teacher. He didn't know where to place him because men in the masculine set of society, they know where to place women. 
But where would you place Adi? He doesn't dress, he doesn't feel like a, a woman, like some other transgenders do. He has a full man's face with mustache and beard and everything, except for sometimes he has a nose ring, sometimes he has an earring, and there's nothing effeminate he's showing up. But where you place him, the society is perplexed. That's why the teacher had to lift him and put him somewhere else. They didn't know where to put him. And for him, it was brutal. Of course, it is brutal. Society has to appropriate. Society does not where well how to appropriate a trans body or a trans mind. In the case of Abby, it's not even body. It is his mind because his mindset, his mindset is different. Questions, problems. This could be brutal for the person. Yes. All right. Can I have the next slide? How do you define effeminate? And that's a more Christian. And especially in Nadi's case, he's not effeminate. But he's not mas he's slightly masculine. But where is he? How do you place him? How do you define effeminate? Because society is demanding that females, women, not even female, women, as I said, men and women according to evolution, and women should be effeminate. The term resonating masculine hegemony. Yes. Because effeminate term came or was coined by the masculine section of the society. Women should be feminine, but should men be masculine? Not quite, because men set up the rules. But for sure, that's what Men would proclaim a woman's body should be effeminate. So the term should have for sure, the term would have been made by a masculine mind, not by a feminine mind, because it's not feminine mind. As I said, there is only man and woman evolutionarily. And for survival, there's only man and woman. There's no effeminate woman. Uh, thank you, and I would um, appreciate discussion on this, because some of the points I did not discuss could be elaborated by the discussion. Okay, Bridget, you can uh, take the slides off. Thank you. Yes. Coil, can we have the questions? Yeah, Fujit. Thank you, sir, for such an insightful uh, talk on this. And uh, could you please have some time for uh, answering a few questions from our participants? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the first question uh, is from Nilish Kumar. Can we assign makeup industry as a platform for body politics builder on a serious note? Can you repeat it? I kind of uh, can you, yes, sir. Uh, can you yes. have more volume? I cannot hear properly. Uh, now we can, I think. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the question is: um, Can we assign makeup industry as a platform for body politics builder on a serious note? It's not easy. It's not easy because. Uh, the society has changed the mindset of women too, because they have to, it has become so much ingrained in them that they had to be appealing all the time. So as long as that situation sustains, the makeup industry will survive. Yeah, yeah, it is making a big platform. That's why he brought up Kim Kardashian as a brand name and as an example, of course, it, of course it is. Of course it is. Makeup industry is one of the biggest industries in the world. Yes. I hope I answered the question. Was there a second part for the question? Uh, no, sir. There is no, another question. Good. No, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, there is another question from Nina. Um, she is asking, gender roles are perpetuated by women as well as men. How do you see the role of women in legitimizing gender role? 
it is, uh, you know, the society rules are set most of the time by man. That's what I, I was trying to say in, our, in my last slides. So the gender roles are specified by them, and uh, it's not that easy to change them. That's why I showed uh, some of the signs um, on uh, uh, gender tolerant toilets. It's slowly changing, a little, little bit. Uh, so that is, uh, that is how the society is set up right now. It's not easy to challenge it because it's worldwide. It is, it has been set up like that. And especially uh, our religious feelings, our religious norms also uh, has influenced us, especially in India also. Yes, because all the goddesses have been described as beautiful, fair, adorned with the gold, adorned with silk and other beautiful dresses. Yes, able to play Veena, musically talented, evident to appeal. It's ingrained in our psyche. So it is not easy to change it. So if women follow that rule, it, it's not, you cannot blame them. You cannot blame them. The upbringing, the, the cultural uh, influences all have made her to think like that. So it's not a, uh, it's not a problem. That's what the situation is, yes. So it's unfortunate, but that is the truth of it. Thank you, sir. Uh, you. If anyone just ask by unmuting yourself, you can. You can speak with our uh, respective sir. Siddhi? So uh, there is a, I just want to ask one question. Is there any connection of male vulnerability with the feminine body, body politic? Can you repeat the question? Is there any connection of male vulnerability with the feminine body politic? Of course, because uh, the, the feminine body itself, as I said, uh, is set up to attract vulnerable men, <laughs> right? It is as if, that's why the, the cosmetic industry is, is, is surviving well, it's thriving. Because uh, women feel that men are vulnerable, so we have to appeal to them. Yes. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, sir. There is another question from Amurtha. Body politics was marked discussed earlier in images, ads, etc. What is the relevance of body politics in contemporary research? Uh, what was the first part? I cannot hear it properly. What was uh, the first part? She is asking that body politics was much discussed earlier in images, advertisements, etc. What is the relevance of body politics in contemporary research? In contemporary research, uh, these are the issues. These are the issues. So for example, take the issue of Addy. That is contemporary. Uh, it, it's a moot question. What is how, how the body should be perceived uh, of a person like Addy? All right. What is effeminate? What is effeminate? Why should a woman be, woman be effeminate? Sh when should we dress as women, as men? That's why I had those pictures of those construction site workers women or paddy field working women. What is their body politics? Why don't we discuss about their body politics, their body and their, the politics, the way they dress? Yes, that is why it is contemporary. That's why that, okay, it's a good question. That's why I had that Addy's um, example there because the contemporary society does not know how to handle a person like Adi. Yes. Yeah, thank you, sir. 
anyone can ask i i mean anyone want to just ask speak to our resource person they can by unmuting themselves okay sir there is another question uh, okay. from saeli how does body designing a source for insecurities among indian society yes that is yes the question yeah i can read it now body design in sort of insecure yes the body this uh, why do you have to design a body that's why i was discussing the, the anatomical body and the body you project you have to hide your anatomic body anatomical body insecurity among in indian society is very difficult it's very it's very difficult because uh, it's not easy uh, ours is not a progressive society it's not and uh, remember uh, i think it was in kerala there was a discussion where what a teacher should wear should a teacher wear sari should a teacher wear churidar or salwar kameez there was a huge discussion and uh, why did that question arise insecurity among indians yes why should the question arise what a teacher should wear how does a teacher job is different from other jobs like a teacher like some of them are uh, pointing out that a teacher being a woman has to be in front of boys the sexual they're seeing only the sexuality that not seeing a teacher there they are seeing a sexual object standing in front of the students yes and uh, this is highly insecure situation a teacher when she is standing in front of boys she has to think that oh my goodness am i showing up my sexuality to this teeming teenage boys their hormones are boiling where are they looking at at my body insecurities so in india that is that is a, a more question because the sexual freedom is completely set up with the different rules in india it's not unlike other societies so as long as the sexual freedom changes this insecurity is going to sustain yes good question saili saili sudakar saili sudakar very pertinent question thank you so much sir for lightening us and uh, now uh, i think it's time to wind up please siddhi can you go there's so, another can, question can read me as a woman do we need to update ourselves on what works yes, in society yes. in terms of dressing there should I answer question do i just speak how do we yes sir yes please please yes oh okay yes, sir. please go ahead. as a I'm woman sorry. do we need to update ourselves on what works in society in terms of dressing the way to speak how do we identify ourselves in this the what's it in society that is if you shift the society you will land up in a different situation if you go to a western world it becomes completely different it becomes completely different so in india unfortunately you have to change but it depends as i said it depends what sort of strata you behave and uh, uh, you kind of handle your daily routine and if, if you are a construction work construction worker if you work in a paddy field if you are a woman nobody cares it depends where you are so it depends on which part of the social strata you belong to is the dressing way to speak how do we identify yes that is that is the issue you know what is defined by bharati anari bharati anari is a nayakati and that that is that is a role and we need appropriations and there are a lot of issues like that of course there there are uh, but do we identify ours in this mess you be your personality yes it's not easy that's why i i had to bring all these issues as gender you know if you challenge it uh that'll be that is that's brutal it's not easy 
It's not easy, but somebody has to do it. Otherwise, we will still be in a, uh, in some other century, living in a distant century. Century before the Industrial Revolution. We are still not there yet. We are still in the pre-Industrial Revolution situation, that especially Indian women. It's, it's a problem with Indian men, of course. Thank you. Uh, so can I have a question? You know, uh, more than a question, okay. I, I think it's kind of observation. You know, um, uh, when you mention about, you know, the gender, uh, you know, the uh, dress or the appearance, I think, you know, uh, as a society, we fail to, uh, uh, you know, accept or accommodate the uh, trans and queer people in terms of their appearance and you know, the way of, you know, inclusivity uh, we lack as a society. Uh, but, you know, uh, maybe um, um, in southern parts, you know, uh, our people, our, you know, uh, generations fought uh, for the rights of, you know, dressing and all, especially the women. Uh, maybe in, you know from paddy field to even in in uh, royal you know um, courts or somewhere so um, the appearance uh, the dressing style or the way they behave or you know uh, or perform their you know gender or something are interconnected in a way or other but uh, uh, you know um, how can we place you know uh, the concept of uh, presenting, you know, femininity, masculinity, or effeminated bodies uh, 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 in a society like ours, you know, uh, how can we uh, define uh, the way of, you know, uh, uh, presenting ourselves? What do you think about the uh, the way we present and the body politics? See, the, see, revolutions always come up as a result of uh, public resentment. And uh, if you want to change that, you have to be out on the street. That's the only way to appeal to the politicians. Uh, you know, there was years ago, there was this uh, big struggle to get permission to cover upper body part for women the famous Mar Marakel Samaram. Yes, yes. The, the women and men, were, some women and men, progressive women and men are out on the street. Oh, we need uh, to bring us up to modesty. In fact, that was a modesty set up by uh, the British and the others who came and saw these people uh, with open upper body part for a woman. And the uh, society was changing perception was changing. So unless somebody fights and somebody convinces and set the rules. So it is partly political, but it's very difficult to change the mindset. It's very difficult to change the mindset. But by, by rules, the law and order situation can command over uh, the, the society's general psyche. The rules could be passed and some of the things could be changed. Yes, some of the, yes, uh, but it has to be made aware. That's why I brought up Adi's case. Adi was very vocal, he didn't hide it. He openly fought for it. So there has to be a struggle and the struggle is going to happen anyway. If the society, if most of the society would feel like that, there would be a struggle for sure it will be open in the public more and more, and people will be out on the street demanding it. And it's, uh, uh, it's it, it, can I, it, there is- Can I add, is add something like this? Sir? Yes, yes. Uh, it's like, you know, um, when, you know, uh, the gender neutral uniform, you know, the scenario, the great debate uh, is going on in, in our state, like, you know, uh, people are asking like, you know, whose choice, that's very important, you know? Uh, who is uh, deciding this is gender neutral and uh, who is, you know, proclaiming this has to be whereby, uh, you know, girl children or boys or, you know, whatever gender they belong to. 
you know uh, uh, the kind of decision you know or the thinking or the archetypical you know uh, designing of uh, dressers or appearance or the presentable you know body is again you know uh, becomes like a question you now in society yes it is <clears throat> it is the collective psyche we should decide but as i said law and order system can uh, uh, make uh, cleavages into it. It can make its own impact on it. We're passing the rules, for example, the, the toilet situation. And uh, those toilets started to be opened in many places in the world. That was a big kind of uh, impactful decision. What is what I mean is that it's, it's a political decision. It's a governmental decision, all right? And it can change. It can set rules there, yes. But sometimes okay. uh, it, it, it won't go properly, like setting up that teachers should wear sari. That's kind of foolish. If, if there's a rule going to be set up like that, that would be foolish. But somebody should be, so it's a, it's a social the whole psyche of the society should just slowly change and you have to bring it out and uh, make this dilemma open so that the society is more aware. That's why we have gender neutral uh, toilets, remember. So there, it is, there are changes happening slowly. There are changes. That's why I brought ag again uh, that Addy's situation here. And he's very vocal about it. He said, yes. hey, there's a problem here. You guys, you girls, change it. There's some change needed. Okay. Did I answer Thank your you. question or? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> you think so? All right. <laughs> yes, sir. There's a question here. Women go to display manly body than for men boys to be effeminate in society. Often effeminate men are more looked down upon whereas it's more acceptable for girls to be tomboys yeah there is a, there is a, like yeah yeah it's not impartial yes it's not impartial that's not fair yes it depends on the on the cultural background also all right effeminate men are more because men are supposed to be really masculine they are supposed to win over the girls and if a man is effeminate oh that will bring this day in that is ridiculous look at that guy he's a uh, effeminate yes because he's supposed to win girls and once you think that there's no need to for a man there's no need to his body or his attitude or his psyche is not made up to win a girl this will, this will disappear but unfortunately that mind that mindset is not going to change that easily all over the world and it's more acceptable for girls to be tomboys oh i don't know that is uh something subjective I, it may not be the case in all the cases and it could be in the urban situation only in the urban situation it's more acceptable for girls to be tomboys uh, but if they are tomboys one day they have to become feminine. That is what our movies project. Look at all the Indian movies. If there's a tomboyish girl character, at the end, she changes, she comes in a sari. She's ready to obey any of the rules, any of the edicts set by the hero. She changes into a sari and she has a bindi on her forehead. She has long hair plated or tied up very well, she has ornaments. So say tomboy has to be shaped up. That is what, and it is very clear in the movies, at the end of the movies, the tomboy girl appearing in sarees. I hope I answered the question. It, it, it's something to be discussed deeply to understand. And there's another question. I think it's a Krishna Gautam. 
Why women who are branded as witches in India or even the sorry, the European vision, women's sexuality is more, yes. Why women are considered as evil, the present day India women accused of being, yes. Witches are period of naked, raped, and hair shaved, face of black, too many societies in this state for female sexual, yeah, females are, Females are not supposed to be explicit in their sexuality because the sexuality decision should be taken by men only. Women cannot. But don't forget, we had matrilineal heritage in Kerala, and this was not there. This issue was not there. The matrilineal matriarchal situation, what we call Marimakatayam, in Kerala. For long, even now, some of the, the, the ethnic groups still follows. It's many in many parts of the world, there is this matriarchal or matrilineal society, and there women have more power. There's no need to attract a man because uh, marriage is just practical only. The head of the family will be uncle, and women would decide along with uncle women would decide the family matters. So sexuality is there not for winning any man. But this, uh, this the witches or the yakshi concept evolved from some kind of phobias among men. That this woman, when they display their sexuality, that is dangerous because they think this this thought came from men who had some uh, issues with their own sexuality. Many men who were afraid that they are not sexual enough thought that there are these women in Kerala. Is the yakshi thought the yakshi concept that these women are here to attract us, have sex and murder us, yes. So these kind of thoughts are, uh, that the witch ending is mainly the, the problem, the psychological problem of men that they are not fit enough. They are not good enough to attract a woman. They are not good enough to subdue a woman. So that kind of embarrassment would lead to brand women as witches, or sexually explicit demanding creatures. So those, that's such kind of, so in fact, it is a problem with men. It is, they are, they, they, they are lost their ego. So it's part of the ego. It's clearly egotistical. When they have deformed the ego, they will blame it on women and try to escape. That is the background of it. Thank you for that question. Okay. Lakshmi has another question. Mental trauma I want to go through. Where do we begin? Well, you have to be, you have a mental trauma, you have to make it clear. You have to make it clear to the society, hey, we have mental trauma. Most probably you should write about it. You should write about it, you should talk about it. Otherwise, there will not be a change. It's very difficult. Sandra Sebastian, what do you think women themselves said impossible beauty was for the other women? But it's just so ingrained in us that we have to be with us. That's what the whole talk was about. Why women has to be appealing. Why women has to be, have to be effeminate. They're supposed to attract others. That's the rule set by men, yes. And it has been ingrained because we are brought up in, in such a way. When a girl is born, they talk about their, especially in India, when a girl is born, they talk about, hey, we have to start saving money for our wedding, as the wedding is the only important part of our life. When the baby is born, oh, is it a, is it, is it a baby girl? Oh, you have to save money for gold. <laughs> that is the common thing. Yeah, so ingrained in us. So when a girl is born, when a, a girl is growing up, she is under constant terror 
I am an unwanted weight on this globe. Yes. That's why uh, that's why I said, you know, babies are like women are born with uh, deficiencies and we have to compensate for the deficiencies. Yes. So it's the progressive thoughts haven't come uh, to us yet. You would have seen uh, the wedding scenes in India, how much gold they put on ridiculous. So that's the cultural background that these girls grow up. It's not their problem. That is the best for society was set up for them. Excuse me. So, so uh, Coil, can we? Uh, yes, please. Siddhi, you can proceed. Sir, uh, I know uh, it's very early there in the USA, and uh, <laughs> you're doing, you know, such an amazing. Uh, a role and responsibility for us. Uh, I think let's uh, wind up uh, and let's continue the I mean, uh, the talk, maybe some other, you know, uh, coming up sessions too. Uh, let me invite Siddhi uh, for a, a formal word of thanks. So anything um, more you want to add, sir? No, uh, thank you for inviting me. This was a real, uh, a vibrant uh, discussion. I'm happy that there were so many people to attend to. And I'm happy many of you brought out your thoughts. And uh, I feel that the answers like you should be there to make changes in our society. I mean, Indian society. As I said, we are in the pre-industrial revolution stage. We have to go forward. We have to, we have to, we have to shift quickly to the current society that is needed. And it's good that you are speaking up. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Bridget. Thank you, Bridget, for bringing me here. Yes, sir. Let's have an, an uh, out of thanks session too, please, sir. Siddhi, please. Yes. A very warm good evening, everyone. It has been such an honor to be a part of this wonderful event. On behalf of the Cultural Studies Research Forum, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed guest. Dr. Ethiran Kathiravan. Genuinely, a lot of thanks to you, sir, for enlightening us with your profound knowledge and covering all the dimensions of the topic, the feminine body politics. You've opened up various ideas on this ample field for students like us. It was such a pleasure to listen to you throughout the session. We look forward to gathering more from you in the upcoming discourses, sir. I hope you would like to carry further such sessions with us. I would also like to thank sincerely the patron of Balat TES, TES, Dr. Kalyani Balat, who is our inspiration, and to my CSRF team, and to entire team TES. A wide round of applause, and thanks to all the participants who have made the event a memorable one. Finally, I would like to thank all of you present here for sparing time from your schedules and helping us make this event a grand success. Thank you, one and all. It's time to wrap our today's session. Have a wonderful evening. Take care and keep learning. And always remember the motto of our test, the best is yet to be. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you well, so Thank you, sir. Thank you. This great uh, opportunity. Thank you. Thanks for being with us, sir. Okay, we'll end the session now. Yeah. Brigitte.